All right, welcome to cognitive restructuring. Um, so this one, boy, this one is a good one, but it does take a little explanation. So I've got my notes here. Um, so I'll be going over those with you. Um, this activity on the feedback that we've gotten so far on this curriculum has been that this is one of the most powerful tools that we're uh, teaching throughout the whole thing. And I really do believe that. I think that um, in my therapy practice, this is something that I teach a ton. Um, and it often, because it it is focusing on how we're thinking and what we're thinking, that sometimes the shift is so subtle that we don't notice how impactful this thing is because it feels like, oh, I've been thinking this way the whole time. But if we were to kind of uh, pay attention to how you were feeling prior and then post, uh, there's a lot of power here. So um, this video will be a, a hair longer and maybe give yourself a little bit longer to focus on this one today. So um, let's just dive right in. So we've got the ABC model. That just kind of gives us a nice, uh, oh gosh, what is that? Uh, like a time, like a line, uh, oh God, whatever it is. Um, to remember this in our in our mind as we're going through our day. So again, um, today is not about getting it perfect, but it's about uh, exposing us to a tool that can be really useful and that we can practice in the future. If you're struggling this one with this one today, shoot me a question. Um, this one gets a lot of questions um, because it can feel really foreign, especially as we're diving into it. So A, we've got the activating uh, event. Uh, this is something happened. So our question line here is what happened and who did it happen to? Um, you don't need to go a, a big one here. It doesn't need to be um, uh, something traumatic or overwhelming. Remember, we're just practicing here. We don't have to work this thing to its full potential just yet. Um, practice. So start with something that seems like your mind just kind of keeps wandering to it. It's something that someone said. Uh, it's a look that you got. Something that just, just kind of like, just chap in your hide a little bit. Like it's like stuck, like that piece of food or whatever. Like it's just stuck there and you keep... Uh, that's a really good task for this one. Um, so we move on to B, which is what are your beliefs around this event? This one can be hard because... Sometimes it feels like our beliefs are objective, that they're facts, that they're not beliefs. They're just what happened. But zoom zoom out a little bit at this, at this junction. Pay attention to the ways in which you're telling this story. Um, and so uh, and so a good question to follow up that, what are your beliefs around this, is what does this event mean to you? that really starts to engage those beliefs and that really starts to give us some insight into exactly what those beliefs are because for most of us they're going to feel like facts they're going to feel quite objective like this is what happened he meant to do that well, the belief there is i'm believing that he meant to do that so just to give you an example there focus on the story that you're telling yourself now um C is consequences. What feelings, perceptions, thought follow, aka our consequences of your beliefs around this event. So if he meant to, I'm pissed. Well, that's going to be a consequence. So moving on to D. So this is disputing or disputation. Um, well, are the beliefs around this event true? It's a good place to start. I want to make sure that we pause here for just a second because sometimes we pit our, how we feel and what, how we think uh, against each other. And I don't wanna do that here. I'm not going, uh, this belief, how you feel, isn't true, therefore my feelings aren't true. That's not what I'm doing here. Um, what we're doing here, what we're hoping to do here, is to create a little bit of space between um, the belief and the, and the feeling. That we can go, well, maybe there's another way to look at this. Again, not sort of neglecting or invalidating or suppressing our feelings, but uh, engaging both our head and our heart. That's kind of the framework that we often use to talk about feelings and thoughts. Um, 
we're not interrogating ourselves here. Are these beliefs true? No, we want to take a much more curious tone than that. The image that I like to have in my head is like talking to a teenager at the dinner table. Um, and then he did this and then he did that. There should be a gentleness there because that's you're, you're definitely in the uh, feelings and the consequences, the beliefs and the consequences there. So, wow, honey, is that the only way that that could have been? Are you sure he meant that? That's the kind of tone that we want to have as we're going through disputing. Uh, so now we get to make some decisions about what this thing means. And this can be an ongoing process. Um, if you're anything like me, uh, it takes me some while, takes me a while to uh, kind of adjust and reconfigure how I think about things. But I have strong feelings, especially when my feelings are hurt or I feel <clears throat> like threatened or vulnerable or, or disrespected, some feelings that really get me going. Um, it can take me a little while. So this isn't like a, and now I'm fixed or now I have new beliefs. This is okay. So next time this thing comes up next time, I'm, I'm trying to get it. I don't think it won't remember the belief. Remember this process that we went through, re-engage it. Um, this is not a one, one and done kind of thing. This is an ongoing thing. And I think it works best, um, when it is, um, an automatic or an easily deployable way of thinking through things. Um, let's see. And that's uh, the model for cognitive restructuring. Um, again, have any questions, shoot them my way. If you do, you're not alone. This one gets a lot of questions.